Heaven and Earth, an internet radio talk show where we help you connect spirit and divine guidance. Lisa Kay, your host, brings you shows that can enhance and transform your life with tips and new ideas for more happiness, abundance, and better relationships. Lisa is an expert on intuition and can show you how to strengthen your inner guidance to empower yourself. Each show is positive and uplifting to inspire your day. Her guest speakers are specialists on self-help, positive thinking, spirituality, and conscious living. Be the best that you can be with Between Heaven and Earth, conscious living for your soul. Suffering in your life. All the suffering, illness, and unhappiness in your life are cries from your soul asking you to fulfill your life's purpose, to realize your greatest potential, and ultimately love, honor, and value yourself in every moment, situation, and relationship. Blake Bauer's book, You Were Not Born to Suffer, comes from his personal healing and spiritual journey, along with his professional counseling, coaching, and healing successes with thousands of people. Blake offers a unique combination of deep insight and practical guidance designed to empower you to transform your suffering in the present and move forward immediately into creating what you want and need most in your life. So let me tell you a little bit about Blake. Blake Bauer is a Chicago native whose fascinating life experiences led him to take the path of a teacher. And he's very, he's so gifted with this extraordinary wisdom that he has. He's become an internationally recognized author, counselor, and alternative medicine practitioner. Blake has traveled worldwide training not- with notable spiritual teachers, healers, and masters, and has acquired a formal education in psychology, Chinese medicine, nutrition, herbal remedies, hypnosis, as well as other forms of traditional healing and alternative medicine. Blake has sought the most effective spiritual and holistic approaches to health and well-being, enabling him to guide thousands of people from all walks of life toward greater psychological, emotional, physical, financial, and spiritual health and freedom. And his best-selling book, and it was and it is a bestseller, You Were Not Born to Suffer, focuses on how loving yourself unconditionally is the key to healing yourself, finding peace, fulfilling your life's purpose, and realizing your full potential on both a professional and personal level. So it's all about love. It's all about loving yourself and how that's going to take you to the path of healing you in so many ways. So welcome, Blake. I'm really excited that you're here today. Hi, Lisa. I'm very excited to be here, too. So I know you've had a busy, busy schedule, um, and you actually hail from down under. Is that true? Kind of. I moved back to the States at the very end of November um, because my parents are struggling with their health and they're in Chicago. So I was there for the last two and a half months and then I've been in Los Angeles for a little bit for... uh, I know that's like... Yes. Yeah, my parents are going through that too and I think uh, we end up... Yeah, that's... That's not a good and a not so good thing. You know, we're kind of in that space of our life where we uh, now take care of our parents. Um, that must bring up a lot of, um, I guess, emotions and, you know, balancing out love and how that's expressed, not just, you know, for yourself, but I guess um, now for your family. It's wonderful that you've come back from so far away. Mm, Very- yeah. And I, I mean, I always, um, I'm going back to Australia um, probably once or twice this year, and it'll always be a very important place for me. Mm. Um, but right now, it seems that life wants me also in the U.S. and in the U.K. to, uh, I guess, launch my book and share my book in a bigger way um, here. And then I think um, it's on its way to being translated into different languages. So I think oh, that'll phenomenal. happen in the next few years too. How exciting! So, How exciting! Yeah, it is. It's it can be overwhelming to be honest, but it is. It's also very exciting because that was the intention that all of this was born from. Is just how do I share with other people what I was lucky enough to find to help me with my deep pain and suffering. Oh well, so. tell us about that. Tell us, you know, the the story of um, well, ha, you know, where this book came from. You know, uh, it's obviously for what we said earlier. It's focused on this unconditional love. 
Um, so how did you, what is that? Let's, can we just go to that first? What do you, what is unconditional love? Well, for me, unconditional love begins with, began with my journey to learning to love myself unconditionally because Mm -hmm. I found I could only really give uh, pure love and attract pure love um, when I had learned to love myself more and more. And so as far as what unconditional love is, um, firstly, I think it's hard to put into words because words just don't do it justice. But if we have to use them to try and get close, I would say it's, um, you know, when we give unconditional love, we're giving without expecting anything in return. And it's, it's not based on having strings attached or manipulation. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it, it, it exists in freedom that when we, you know, when we show someone that type of love and that love is shown in my experience with uh, attention and affection and appreciation of, of something or someone to truly value and appreciate. Um, if we are talking about a person for, for example, um, without expecting them to, uh, make us happy or make us love ourselves and also without trying to own or possess or limit somebody. Um, but to be able to, like I said, like show them love and show them affection and show them attention and appreciation, Mm -hmm. Um, and, and gratitude for their existence, their unique, um, you know, it almost, it it almost seems like it, I could easily think about loving someone else unconditionally and all those things that you were saying, you know, it's, there's, you're giving from your heart when you love them, you want to do things for them. Um, when I think about loving myself, I have a little harder time with that. So, and we all do. Yeah. So could you talk about that? Yes. Well, that's a loaded question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I want to follow your book. I have to love myself unconditionally. Now, how do I do that? Yes. And that, and so what I was going to say is it's, it's, it's one thing to think about loving another person unconditionally. It's a whole nother uh, ball game to actually love them unconditionally because we can be idealistic in our thinking and we can think that we're capable of it, but it's not until we're actually in relationship, as you know, that we're actually, you know, we're tested with our partner or our parents or our children or our friends, um, you know, as to whether we really are practicing our capacity to love unconditionally and our capacity to love another unconditionally comes back to how much we have learned to love ourselves and how honest we are with ourselves and how much we've healed our own insecurity and self-judgment and guilt and shame and uh, dishonesty really with ourselves. So, um, you know, all of us m- never learned how to love ourselves as children, and, and that's because our parents never learned how to love themselves, and, and they couldn't teach us or could only teach us, you know, to a certain degree, which for most of us was very minimal. Um, and then we struggle our whole lives not knowing how to accept ourselves or believe in ourselves or be true to ourselves. So that's expre- the key thing is accepting yourself and not having the, the judgment. And Yes. So how do you do that without – I think part of the reason why we, quote, judge ourselves or we're always trying to get better, right? So if you want to get better, you want to um, do the right thing, which our parents tell us then you have to know what things are not right. So that that becomes, okay, I didn't do this right. I'm not, um, I have to improve that. Uh, this is not the good thing about what I'm doing, so I have to do something different. So how do you address that with this self-love? Well, I think it's a, it's a process, Lisa, you know, of learning to be kind to yourself mm-hmm. and not be so critical and judgmental. And I think for me and what I've seen to be the key for a lot of people, and when I say a lot, I mean thousands of people, is to really learn to be true to yourself in every moment of every day. Because when you are, then you don't give yourself such a hard time for being um, not authentic. When we're not true to ourselves in our, you know, expressing ourselves Mm -hmm. with our words and when we're not true to ourselves with our actions – we end up criticizing and judging ourselves and feeling bad about ourselves because of it. And when we're true to ourselves with our words and our actions, which then leads to authentic relationship and to authentic work and to good health, 
Um, then um, we we are doing what we love in life with people that we love in life. And if we want to master something, then we're mastering something because we feel like it's our purpose and our passion mm-hmm. or we're mastering something because it's it's a marriage or a relationship that we really want to um, – you know, mm-hmm. we want to be in. And so we want to work on it. But then as you do that, then you, you learn not to, you know, you learn not to be too hard on yourself and you know, you're just, you're just doing your best. And I think mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. me, that commitment to not settling for less than I'm capable of is really, really important. And so I tend to walk this line. And I think we all have to walk this line of not settling for less than we're capable of because we are, our life is a miracle and we are a miracle. Mm-hmm. Oh, all of a sudden I lost you. I can't hear you now. That's odd. Hello? Okay, now Am you're I back. there? Yeah, now you're back. Oh, okay. I Where did I happened. get cut off? Um, <laughs> uh, you were saying about how, you know, you wanted to basically, um, you know, be the best you. Okay. And, and without, I guess, uh, without beating yourself up. I think that's kind of what I'm getting from what you're saying. Yes, I think we are all called to walk this fine line between not settling for less than we're capable of Mm -hmm. and being kind to ourselves at the same time. Um, And it's it is a tall calling, but I do feel it is it is our calling to be completely kind and accepting of ourselves in the present moment, but then also not settle for less than we're capable of, which really means, you know, are we being true to ourselves with our words and our actions? So it's a constant balance between um, being true to ourselves and being the, you know, the best, the most that we could be, but then at the same time, not beating yourself up and and really tearing yourself apart, sounds like is what you're saying. Yes, and not letting, not letting our fears stop us, mm-hmm. not letting self-doubt stop us. So even if they great. arise, we still are true to ourselves. Awesome stuff. Well, I hear the music, so we're going to go to break. And then when we come back, we'll continue our discussion with Blake. Thank you. This is OTRFM. Part of the IOM Radio Network. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Ohm Times Radio, every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Hailing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Hi, everyone. This is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. This is OTR FM, part of the IOM Radio Network. And welcome back. I'm Lisa Kay, and you're listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio. And we're talking to Blake Bauer, and we're talking about uh, his book, which is based on 
How to Love Yourself Unconditionally, which is the key to, it sounds like everything, and his book is called You Were Not Born to Suffer. So, Blake, we were talking about, um, basically, you have better words than I do, but something, it sounds like really to, uh, when you're dealing with yourself, not to compromise who, who you are and, and uh, what your full potential would be, but at the same time, you don't want to beat yourself up to become that. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. And I think I think organically when we honor the truth inside of us with every word and every action every day, that the light and the love that is inherent to our true nature or our soul or our spirit or God within us, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. naturally flowers, naturally blossoms and naturally shines, you know, like the sun. Oh, I love that. I, so... Uh, and you were talking about being honest with yourself. And so how do you do that, what you were just saying to get, I mean, because it sounds like a wonderful place to be. How do you, can you give us an example? Well, I think most of us never learned to be aware of what we're feeling and thinking and what we need and want in the present moment. So before we can articulate ourselves clearly, we have to be aware of what we're feeling. And so practices like meditation or yoga or breathing, things that bring you into your body and and help you to be more mindful of what you're feeling and thinking are really important because that's a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. Before you can say, I feel hurt or I feel excited, you have to be self-aware enough to be able to articulate what's going on inside your body. And because as children, most of us never learned how to express ourselves emotionally and we never had parents who mirrored back to us what we were feeling. A lot of us never had parents to say, what are you feeling? What do you need? What do you want? No, it's usually don't feel that way. Right. Why are you crying? Exactly. Or, or they're not there and everything gets internalized. So that's a prerequisite because, and then on top of that, then comes the fear. So there's the fear of expressing ourselves, which is there, even if we're we know how to express ourselves, but then if we don't know how to express ourselves, we're afraid to express ourselves because we're afraid of like, what if it doesn't come off clearly and what if we don't make sense? Right, or I'm not supposed to do that. I was told that I shouldn't, you know, be that way. Why are you feeling that way or, right? Right, exactly. So for me, it's all come back to to practicing being in the present moment and breathing and being in my body so I can be aware of what I'm thinking and feeling in a situation and then finding the right uh, approach to expressing myself, which I have personally found to be what's called nonviolent communication, where you take responsibility for what you're feeling and you say, I feel hurt, I feel mm. uh, excited, I feel, you know, whatever you feel, you're taking responsibility instead of blaming someone or saying, You made me feel this way. And that's a really important mm. um, mm-hmm. lesson because at the end of the day, nobody can make us feel a certain way and it only happens if we allow it and it's a very subtle deep process and so for me being aware of it and then being able to express it clearly and then to act based on that as well and it's almost that simple but that's the hardest thing because we're often so in our head we're we're living fast we're stressed and we always have this self uh talk that goes on in our in our brains we're always talking to ourselves through our minds, right? And Absolutely. it sounds like those are the words that you want to be aware of. And I love what you were saying about, um, you know, owning how you feel and how you think as opposed to you made me think this way or feel this way, right? And uh, we had a guest on a, a few weeks ago who was really keyed into the words, the words that we use and how important they are, Um so, you know, she actually said something very similar that when you say, look, you made me feel this way, you give away your power, right? Um, right. So you have to right. own it. I think you're saying the same thing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So how do we undo that? How do we now fix that? Fix what in fix, particular? Fix the the thoughts that we have that are maybe giving away our power or perhaps tearing ourselves down, self-criticism. I think, um, firstly, a lot of it, like I said, comes back to awareness. And once we become aware of a habit or a belief system or a perspective that we hold or you know view life from that is self-destructive or disempowering, then we can begin to practice the things that can um, turn it around or that are mm-hmm. healthier or more constructive. And so 
Um, again, if you notice that you have a habit of blaming other people, well, then it's important to know that if you blame, you're always going to be unhappy or sick or give your power away to others mm -hmm. and allow yourself to be manipulated and taken advantage of and constantly felt, feel like a victim. But if you could understand the truth, which is that we really are only the victim of our fear. So if it's always our fear that stops us from speaking or acting based on our truth. So we may want to say, you know, I feel hurt, or we may want to say, I love you. And we're afraid, we might be afraid of being honest. And then because of that fear, we stop ourselves and we hurt ourselves and we hold ourselves back from the things that we want or from moving away from the things that we don't want or that don't feel good. Um, so it's, again, like I said, it's about becoming more aware of what you're feeling, what you're thinking, whether those thoughts and those beliefs serve you or not. And, um, and, and then, and again, it, it comes back to speaking and acting based on your truth in every moment. And like I said, when we, when we don't speak our truth and when we don't act based on our truth and we let fear and self doubt stop us and insecurity and guilt stop us, then what happens is when you don't speak your truth, you betray yourself. You hurt yourself. You lie to yourself and you lie to others. And then that's where all the other uncomfortable emotions are born. Because if you're not honest with yourself and others because of fear or a lack of awareness, then you feel ashamed and guilty because you didn't have the courage to be true to yourself and you lied. So you feel guilty and ashamed. Mm, so it just escalates. Or, it just or escalates. Or maybe it twirls down into the hall or the, down the toilet. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like it's, that's the moment where it all co-arises. So we've all been, there's a term in Buddhism called co-arise. It's like where things arise together. And in my experience, suffering arises from this dynamic. When we betray ourselves, when we and basically reject what we're feeling, thinking, what we want or need. When we reject that inside and but we are betraying ourselves and that causes all depression and disease as well as anger, sadness, guilt, shame, fear, etc. It's just that's where it all just flowers from. Mm. So when you can speak and act based on your truth in the present moment, that's how you heal the past pain that you've created and allowed. And it's also how you move forward and prevent that from create, you know, prevent yourself from creating more pain because you're not being self-destructive anymore right. when you're true to yourself. How did you discover all this? Through my own suffering first, mm. um, through intense mental and emotional torture personally. Mm -hmm. And then I've now had the honor of, of working with something like 30,000 people uh, wow. around the world. So I've worked with a lot of people one-on-one -on -one and then a lot of people in groups. And, um, and I've always been quite um, like a healthy skeptic. <laughs> and, I, and I've also been very logical. Mm -hmm. So I never, I don't believe in blind faith. And so, but now I have a faith that you know, like, as we mm -hmm. say, can move mountains, you know, I believe in God, I believe in the universe and I feel I'm Through one with experience, right? Yet that intelligence. And I believe we're all one with that intelligence and that. Oh, I love that. I think that's great. And so what, what was the most powerful for you? Was there a turning point for you that uh, all this, or was it a gradual thing? It was both gradual and different intense. Did you have epiphanies all of a sudden it's like, Oh my gosh, that, that, that was it. Absolutely. And the biggest, the biggest um, experience for me was when I was 18 and I um, had been doing a lot of drugs mm -hmm. and drinking, excuse me, for a number of years. And I had been arrested a number of times and suspended from school a number of times. And I was really struggling and I was numbing myself with uh, marijuana and I was popping pills and um, drinking a lot and partying a lot and just constantly running for myself. And at the age of 18, I really hit rock bottom. I pushed away everyone and everything that I cared about. And I went from being very arrogant and thinking I was invincible to being extremely insecure and confused and lost and very paranoid, in particular from mm. all my drug use. Paranoid, wow. Yeah, very, very paranoid. Like I would overanalyze everything and I couldn't have a conversation with someone without overanalyzing, you know, how they were perceiving what I was saying and even their body language. And it was wow. It's things that we do in, as human beings in general, but after, 
experimenting with different drugs. It was like magnified and it mm-hmm. was horrible. It was really, really horrible. And that, um, you know, then I realized after I, you know, pushed away everything that I cared about and lost the identity that I had. So my old self died so that you know, my, who I really am could be born, but I didn't know that then. And it was a, you know, it was a very tough time. Um, I, I stopped doing drugs and I stopped drinking and I found that underneath those patterns of numbing out, and I used to also use food to numb out and overeat, um, to numb my emotions as well. And so when I started to wake up to all those habits that I was, you know, engaged in to numb out and to find some relief in a self-destructive way that underneath, you know, I was really tortured psychologically and emotionally. And to make a long story short, that led me to five different universities, to studying with spiritual masters and things like Tai Chi and Qigong and meditation Mm, and hands-on healing. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, so is it, so it was a mind and a body thing. It was everything. So, and then it, it, it started to, I guess it sounds to me like basically you had to hit, quote, the rock bottom. You had to get to the point where I can't live like this anymore. So I'm going to go find the things to help to, to change. Yes, I had to liberate myself. Did you choose certain things for, or did, were you guided or did you say, oh, well, I always thought this stuff was cool. I'm going to go do that. No, I was more just guided, I mm. think, very in, instinctually and intuitively. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I would. I think I have a very strong instinct, and I think we all do. And, and and as you said, I heard you know in your introduction, you know that you're you're very intuitive, and that's one of your mm-hmm. you know your strengths that you help other people with. And I think deep down we all have that. It just has become covered up by years of pain and years of betraying ourselves. And when we betray ourselves, that's why we don't trust ourselves. Because would you would you trust someone who has you know, hurt you for 40 years? Would you trust someone who's betrayed you for 40 years? Right. And that's what most of us have been doing to ourselves. Well, that's what I love our about lives. our, you know, your intuition is because that gets you to, you know, that helps you find those things that are really the things that you have to address right away that you're covering up. Well, we're at our, uh, our next break. And when we come back, we're going to let everybody know how you can connect with Blake and um, some of the wonderful things, the solutions that he's found to problems that you may have. So stick with us. We'll be right back. This is OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network. As difficult as it is to believe, There are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Miriam Knight of New Consciousness Review, inviting you to my new show where I interview the rising stars of the Conscious Awakening. We'll explore the many faces of consciousness and action and intriguing perspectives on life, the universe, and everything in between. Join us each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Rising Stars Show. Join Elliot Jolish. The Business Therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. You're listening to OTRFM, part of the IOM Radio Network.
to Between Heaven and Earth Radio, Conscious Living for Your Soul. And we are on the Om Times Radio Network. And we are today talking about how to eliminate suffering in your life. Uh, and our guest is Blake Bauer. And he is an international bestseller. Uh, his book is You Were Not Born to Suffer. And he's helped thousands, thousands and thousands of people all around the world. It's just absolutely exciting. And uh, this is his dedicated life's work. Um, and I'm sure he's going to help so many, many, probably millions more, Blake. So we are at our half hour mark, and I wanted to do some announcements in terms of where people out there who are listening can connect with Blake. So Blake's website is unconditional-selflove.com. Did I get that right, Blake? Yes, it is. unconditional dash selflove.com. That's, that says it all right there. <laughs> <laughs> and your book, uh, You Were Not Born to Suffer, people can get it on Amazon. And um, where else can they get your book? Yes, Amazon um, is the best place to get it for now. And mm-hmm. then it's also on iTunes and Audible if you prefer uh, listening. Wow, that's cool. Are you yes. the one doing the talking or is somebody yes. else that you are? Yes, <gasps> yes it That's took exciting. me 30 hours in a recording studio to get oh the, the seven hours of the book. It was it was a very intense process. I can imagine you probably, your voice probably got tired after a while. It did. <laughs> it, I did it over weeks. But, um, wow, awesome. Yes. So you can listen to Blake, have him in your living room with you while you're, I don't know, if you're doing the dishes, you can listen to the book, right? Um, which I think is great. So, um, and also you have uh, retreats that you do as well. Yes. Um, I talk I'm, about that. I'm hosting a retreat in Colorado, uh, just in about a week or a week and a half at the Shambhala mountain center. Um, that's a few hours from Denver and, um, that's actually booking up at the moment. Um, and is looking to be a very amazing weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, focuses on all my retreats focus on uh, the keys to loving yourself unconditionally and thus the key to to healing yourself and then we do a lot of meditation and qigong uh, practice Um, and um, so that's march 4th to the 6th and then my next retreat after that is in london Um, that's may 14th and 15th or 15th and and 16th and that's in association with the College of Psychic Studies. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I think I'm going to be doing one in uh, Byron Bay, Australia at the end of July. Um, But that hasn't been finalized yet. Wow. Very exciting. So, um, and also I think the one in Colorado, you were telling me, we were just talking a little bit before the show about that it's in uh, a a special place, the Shambhala Mountain Center, I think you said. Yes. Yes. It's it's a Buddhist uh, retreat center. That sounds exciting. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> yes, I'm so excited. I'm not a Buddhist, but the Shambhala mm-hmm. Mountain Center is very close to my heart. I actually used to go there as a student, wow. um, and that it, they're connected to Naropa University, which mm-hmm. I'm sure a lot of people listening are familiar with, which is one of the the only Buddhist university in the United States that offers accredited bachelor's and master's degrees. A very special place. That sounds divine. I, I like to go to places like that. You know, it's a really helps connect you in within and um i think with all that you know the buddhist practices and, and the you know qigong and all that going on must have awesome energy i'm really i'm an energy junkie so yes <laughs> so. The, re, the retreat center is actually on 600 acres of wow. pristine land um in the mountains so it's a very special place and obviously that supports um the healing work to be so so much in nature and not around cement and cars and gasoline yeah. and toxins. Right. So. And then you can really get into the self love. So Blake's website again is unconditional dash self com, And it's Blake Bauer. So go check out his website. And I, I think, um, I would not walk, but run to one of these retreat treats. I mean, I think, uh, what better, way to uh, heal yourself other than be immersed in love, right? Mm, absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I have a couple announcements myself. I wanted to let everybody know that um, 
what I do is I help people develop their intuition and basically that's to turn you know within because I think that's where the source of all your higher self uh, your divine guidance is and you know just as uh, Blake was telling us that's how he was guided to find um, the solutions for what he was going through and I, I that's why I do it I want to help people learn how to use their intuition to um, make a better life for themselves and uh, I know a lot of people who come to me are interested because they know they have intuition they get some intuitive um, urges or things that pop up in them but they're not exactly sure what it is and I help you get a good handle on your intuition so you can figure out what is going on inside you you can make it happen when you want on what you want and and get information that is really useful and can help transform your life so uh some of the i teach seminars and workshops i also teach online and there's um we've got actually we have a six week course going on right now um online where people get modules once a week and then i get on a a an online webinar with the students and we practice uh, intuition exercises. I ask, answer people's questions. It's really exciting. We just had one last night and the students are doing really, really well. Um, and when you go through the course at the end, you're actually able to really connect your intuition, know when it's a real message that you're getting or when it's not, uh, how to get those intuition messages more consistently and help get it to help you know what you want to know, getting that detailed information, connecting to get your divine guidance and with your higher self. So if you go to my website, you can find out more about what I do uh, at lmk88.com. And if you sign up for my newsletter, you get free tips basically once a month. Also, you get a free ebook with 16 intuition exercises you can do at home. And the ebook is called no surprise, developing your intuition. And uh, that's at lmk88.com. So go there. And uh, also I'm going to be at the Body, Mind, Spirit Expo in Chicago next weekend on March 5th uh, and 6th. I am a keynote speaker. I'll be talking about the 10 key secrets to intuition. So if you come, it's a free talk. Come uh, come by and and learn how to uh, learn more about your intuition and we're going to show you some of the great secrets. And also, uh, if you enter your name into a raffle there at the talk, uh, you could win an, a free intuitive session with me, which is a $200 value. So that's that's usually pretty popular. So come on by. It's at the Midwestern Conference Center in Chicago, Illinois. N- not this weekend, but the weekend after. And I also have a booth there. I'm at uh, booth 306. So I'd love to see you if you're out in Chicago. So those are my announcements, and we're, I'd like to get back to our discussion about um, unconditional love, loving yourself. Um, so Blake, you were talking about, uh, actually, what piqued my interest was you said um, that your retreat is about going over the keys to loving yourself. So what are there, I, don't, I, I know you're not going to do the retreat here, but uh, are there certain keys that help us love ourselves yeah what are they what could that be (laughs) as i keep reiterating the the one master key is to speak and act based on your truth so what does that mean does that mean you just whatever comes in your head comes out your mouth or well be as you become more present you're not no because that's a that would be very reactive okay you know and so yes you know you'll have thoughts and you'll have feelings and sometimes it's something that needs to be said immediately, but sometimes it's something to just be um, felt and processed and then approached. You respond instead of react. So, you know, there's no one way to go about it except for to be present, you know, to really be present. And then, you know, and if you have a lesson to learn because you say something reactively and you say something hurtfully or unconsciously, well, then you're going to learn a hard lesson. If you don't say it mindfully Mm. and kindly, then you're going to have to, yeah, you'll have to learn a lesson. Yeah. And that's a, that's a big lesson. So that's, that's really the biggest thing because most of us are, very, um, you know, we're in denial and we're afraid and we're insecure and we feel guilt and shame for what we feel. And so we hide what we really feel and we don't act based on what we want. Um, right. 
So that's really the biggest key. And that's actually the key to being yourself, Mm -hmm. to accepting yourself, to believing in yourself, to trusting yourself and to forgiving yourself. And that is the key. And then, then from there, everything, there's, there's some other kind of secondary things that are very important, which. So when you work with somebody, what what do you have, like if somebody were to come to you for a private session, is there, what it would be, what would they, could they expect to go to, to be doing with you? Well, when someone comes to see me, we talk about everything, really. We talk about everything that's going on in their life now and how they feel about it and what they want and need and what they're struggling with. And then we, I talk about their childhood and, you know, we talk about everything. And mm-hmm. because I'm very honest about the lessons I've learned and what once appeared to be mistakes, you know, people I've hurt or ways that I've hurt myself, I create a space that's safe where... I, I've accepted those parts of me and those lessons um, and that darkness in me. And so people, when I'm with them, feel safe and comfortable to tell me anything and everything because they can tell I'm not going to judge them. And that's mm-hmm. really... Because you've been there. Or, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so we do that. And then I help people to, under, to, to acknowledge uh, what they don't love about themselves now and what they don't love that they've done in the past and where they're not loving themselves now. So I help people to see where they're betraying themselves or compromising themselves or not being true to themselves in their life now in in any relationship or situation. And then I guide them and coach them on how to love themselves unconditionally now. And, And we also address things like food and diet and lifestyle and money and because it's all connected. Everything comes back to our relationship to ourself and how much love and kindness and respect and honesty is present in that inside of our own mind and our own body with ourselves. Um, and then that either creates a healthy, happy life and, and you have enough money and, and connection and all that, or mm-hmm. it creates depression and disease and isolation and poverty and struggle. So if you just want to, you know, at least stop all that that all that uh, suffering in your life, as you say, all the negative things, you know, at least you get to that point going through all this. And then um, that opens up a whole world of potential to do to, it sounds like wonderful things, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, you can do what you want without just, you know, feeling like life always has to be so hard or yeah, you know, that it's, you always feel misunderstood. Sounds like it could be a great life. A wonderful life. Well, we're going to go to break, and when we come back, uh, we'll finish up our conversation with Blake. So stay with us. You're listening to OTR FM, part of the IOM Radio Network. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of the Inspired Parenting Radio Show, where every week we bring you empowering information from the diverse fields of conscious parenting, education, neuroscience, consciousness, health, and metaphysics to support you in nurturing the best in your children. So if you're interested in understanding what shapes your children's minds, spirits, and hearts, join me every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and prepare to be inspired. 
Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single OM Times endeavor. Host your show with OM Times Radio Network. You're listening to OTR FM, part of the IOM Radio Network. People he has um, really transform their lives and help get them out of suffering and into finding a world of peace and, and finding their life's purpose, fulfilling their potential, and so on. So, um, Blake, I had a, a question for you. Did you have anybody that you worked with who um, you could tell us about who, who went through a, a transformation that you, you know, that you did your work with? Well, I mean, firstly, I guess out of respect, there's nobody in particular I can... Oh, of course um, not. Well, you don't have to name any, anybody. Right, right, right. Or you could do a, a combination. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I have seen, and again, you know, at this time, I've had the honor of witnessing a lot of people, and I've seen uh, miraculous transformations. What do they come people. to you for? What kinds of things? Uh, Lisa, everything. Um, mm, I have worked with... I've worked with um, kids who um, have had pain in their body or nightmares. I've worked with people in their 60s or 70s, um, you know, just wanting to have a healthy, happy life now or Mm -hmm. deal with some issues from their past that were unresolved. And I work with individuals and couples and men and women and, um, you know, you know, heterosexuals, homosexuals, transsexuals. I've had the honor of working with um, so many different types of amazing people. Um, and and what kinds of transformations have you seen? Well, I feel, I, I feel like I don't want to be too, um, what's the word? I want to stay humble in, in my expression. But I've seen people, for example, some, of the, some people who have experienced the worst type of abuse that you could imagine, for example, mm-hmm. um, physical abuse and sexual abuse, get to a place of forgiveness in themselves and understanding of the purpose that their wounds and their suffering has served and then move forward to just enjoy their life more and, and, and enjoy uh, more peace and happiness on just a very simple plane. And then I have some clients who have moved – um, I have one client who who moved to another country and started a very successful uh, cafe, for example, that's one of the top rated uh, cafes in a foreign country on TripAdvisor. And I mm-hmm. have, um, you know, so I have clients who have made huge leaps in, in their business success. I have clients who have left marriages. I have, I have clients who have found new relationships and fallen in love and gotten married. Mm. Um, I've, I have clients who have healed their current relationships. I um, you know, I have a lot of clients I've helped leave situations that are not healthy for them, whether that be a, a marriage or a, a, or a work environment. Um, I've so it helped sounds a lot like that there, that's what the, uh, I guess the resultants of, um, some of the resulting results of your work is that people are able to open their eyes to who they are, the things that have been blocking them. And uh, you help clear that away, and then they can really move forward and express their their potential through all this wonderful energy that's going to come out because the blocks are no longer there. Did Absolutely. you say that's what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I mean, we all just want to enjoy our life, and we want to love and be loved and be appreciated, and well, be happy, and and you know, go out and have that energy all the time. When you're happy, you have the energy, and you want to go out and do things. And I think if from what you're saying and I, you know, just sort of thinking about um, this, that we, we kind of get ourselves into a spot. We don't know how we got there. Right. right? And I think even you went through that, um, you know, where we might find our, we're not as happy as we want to be. We're tense, we're stressed, we're uh, maybe down or depressed. And it's like, well, I don't know how to get out of that hole. And it sounds like you've discovered, um, how we can break th- break free of that, whatever it is that's, that's getting it, that got us there. And maybe we, we didn't know how we got there and that part of healing 
is knowing how we got there. <laughs> Absolutely. And we, Lisa, we inherit uh, habits and beliefs and we yeah. adopt habits and beliefs as we, you know, as, as kids and That's teenagers case, and, right? and young adults. And I think we all kind of coast at times on autopilot and then we get to those points where we hit a wall or we get frustrated or a situation is really painful or stressful. And that's when we have to reevaluate our thoughts and our uh, behaviors and our belief systems to say, you know, yes, this might have worked for me for the past decade or the past year, but now it's not working for me. So I need to open my mind. I need to open my heart to a new perspective. That's and, the key, the new yeah, perspective, right? Right. And maybe there's something I don't know. Maybe there's something I didn't know that is that I can look at life in a certain way or I can relate to myself or life in a certain way that I didn't know was possible before. But now I have to find this other approach or this other path uh, or this new perspective because if I keep mm -hmm. going this way, my life is not going to be very good. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, as I continue to heal and to grow, I would have to leave behind – you know, relationships, habits, belief systems that didn't serve me and were limiting. And, and you know, a, a, a tool or a raft can serve you very well for a certain period, but then eventually you can hit a wall with it. And it's like, okay, I need a new raft. I need a new belief system. I need a new approach to take me to the, to the next level. So even I believe there's two types of beliefs, limiting beliefs and liberating beliefs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even a liberating belief, either, even a healthy belief system can become limiting when you've reached the end of its usefulness. And then you have to take a leap to another way of, of viewing life or another way of being. And so and, – and for me, that process doesn't really stop. And then I think eventually we kind of get to this point where you realize that all belief systems are just an illusion and all thoughts are really just an illusion. Mm -hmm. um, and – and then you're just alive in the present moment, feeling and experiencing and being, and you're not stuck in misery or disease. So and these, that's really where we want to be. These limiting beliefs and these different uh, or these limiting perspectives, um, it's one thing to discover what they are, which uh, it sounds like you take people through that process, you know, being honest with yourself. But, then the, the, I guess the question I have is, so how do you come up with new beliefs? How do you come up with a different perspective? Is it just basically, oh, well, I see what that is, so I'm, I have to do the opposite? Or, I, Well, I think absolutely that's a part of it. I think you, know, you continue to read. You, we continue to study. We go mm -hmm. see a therapist or a teacher or mm -hmm. a healer, and people open us up to different perspectives that resonate and feel true to us. And then I think if you're really open and you're really present and like you like to teach about you know, trusting your intuition, if you're really with yourself, you can begin to hear and trust the guidance you get from within and from without because we are one with the universe and one with universal intelligence or God. And so we have a direct access to so much wisdom and, and life will guide us forward. Like I, I found actually that the love inside of us and the intelligence inside of us is so strong that if you listen to, to it, it will break down any wall or any barrier that's causing suffering or limiting you and it will illuminate the understanding you need and the path forward that you need. Wow. So how do you live your life today? Do, what, do, how do you, do you still need the book? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. Thank, thank God. Mm -hmm. um, so so basically you go through the book, it, it, it builds you these tools and these things that can help you <clears throat> with your life and then it's like, okay, I'm, I'm good. Yes, well, so the, <laughs> the, the lessons are the same every day. So basically once mm -hmm. you understand that the, the main life lessons are all around how to love yourself unconditionally and thus how to love others unconditionally – then you know it's like a, it, for me I have this framework through which I interpret every one of my experiences and so um, you know you get very skilled and good at perceiving life you know what is this trying to teach me every moment of every day what's the lesson here about loving myself or mm -hmm. you know loving someone else or loving being being that love being that awareness um, and so the book, when I wrote my book, my intention was to help as many people as I could. And it was also to make the book as practical as possible so that someone who couldn't afford 
uh, a session or someone who couldn't afford a workshop or anywhere that you are in the world, if you really wanted to heal and you were willing to take 100% responsibility and do anything you had to do to heal or be free, that if you were to go through the, every chapter and do all the questions I ask and all the practices that I've outlined, that it would clean out all the stuck emotional pain and toxicity that you've been holding on to since you were a child. But uh, the truth is, is a lot of us don't actually want to do that work. We want someone to fix us or rescue us. Mm -hmm. And that's a very big lesson. And then eventually you realize that nobody's going to rescue or fix you. They might help you a great deal, but then you have to go home to yourself and to your life and practice. You have to love yourself unconditionally every day. You have to be true to yourself every day. You are the creator and you're mm. the one who has to create your life. So nobody can do that for you. What a, um, so a the, book is, message. <laughs> the book is designed very effectively to give you like, you know, the, this, the saying you give a woman a fish, they eat for a day. You teach them to fish. They eat for a lifetime. Yeah. So that the, the book is designed. So it teaches you to fish for your own soul, to love yourself unconditionally. So you're not constantly seeking love outside of yourself and causing pain. Oh, that sounds awesome. And I think it's, you know, it's a wonderful work that you've done and it's all in one place. So now people can just get the book. You were, you were not born to suffer. Love yourself back to inner peace, health, happiness, and fulfillment. I love that title. It's so good. We're at the end of our show, Blake. Wow, that went so quickly. <laughs> it went like Zoom. And I know there's so much more to talk about. You'll have to come back. Yes, I would love to. Yeah, I'd love to have a discussion with you. We could maybe we could talk about um, other things that uh, you've done in your life in terms of. I just, I'm curious about you know the philosophies of uh, and the work that you've done to get yourself where you are, and also more about what uh, people can do to or what you can do to help others fulfill their purpose. So thanks, thanks so much, Blake, for coming. Appreciate Always, it. Thank you so much for having me. Been great. Well, you've been listening to Between Heaven and Earth Radio, and we are here every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So come back and listen to us again on Ohm Times Radio. Angel blessings to everyone. See you next time. <laughs>